Welcome, everyone, to a Mexican Crossing Lines with your hosts, Cindy Gomez Shemp. And Duke Gomez Shemp. You're listening to 88.1 FM, KPPPLP, Fargo, Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Thank you all for being here on today's show. I have named it after one of the central figures I will be featuring today, an activist, an activist from Nashville, Tennessee, named Tristan Call. You've seen him a little bit on my show before, but we're going to do a much deeper dive into his work with Pueblos Sin Fronteras, Al Otro Lado, Border Angels, Minority Humanitarian Foundation, uh, and so many, so many other things we are going to be covering today. Specifically, I am going to show you how this comes all the way from the top by a democratic leadership in our Congress like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who, as you know, wants to abolish ICE, has called detention facilities concentration camps, and has refused to condemn the Antifa bomber of the Tacoma, Washington detention facility. Well, now she's been tweeting about an action that took place in none other than Nashville, Tennessee, where an ice raid was thwarted by a group of quote-unquote neighbors who stopped the uh, ICE uh, officials from taking anyone into custody. And we're going to cover the connections that Mr. Call, Tristan Call, has to all of these folks on today's show, Call Ice. Call Ice is the name of my show. Uh, We'll also talk about how Tristan is also connected to some of the people in Border (coughs) Angels, like Hugo Castro and Enrique Morones, who have in the past tricked border patrol into opening the border for a narco wedding for a wedding that included uh, someone who was a convicted drug trafficker and connected to the cartels this is why you guys need to know about who these activists are and what They are doing and their close connections to organized crime. And we'll also be bringing you information about some of their media allies. But first, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. We are getting closer and closer to August. If you have not made your tax deductible donation to our organization, our nonprofit, the People's Press Project, so that we can go to Tijuana to report from Tijuana with Oscar El Blue Ramirez. I pray that you do. Please, it is for a very good and important cause. If you've been watching me for a day, a week, a month, a year, or two, or three, you know the hard work that we do to put information into our programs you will not see anywhere else, not in the state, not in the country not even in Mexico, because I am a Mexican crossing lines. I am bringing you in-depth investigative journalism on all of these activists, and I have been doing so for years now. So if you can donate to this worthy cause, to our nonprofit organization, tax-deductible donation, it'll help us get to Tijuana next month. Thank you also to all of you who have sent me messages, comments, and links many of which I am using for tonight's show from the bottom of my heart to all of you. Muchas gracias, Duke. How can folks get a hold of us? <clears throat> well, you can get hold of us many ways, and I, I would like to thank people for working with us, participating with us, um, making donations, supporting our show. For the past two weeks, we've had some technical problems, but uh, at about midnight last night, I think I fixed it all. I was very excited. Did a few test streams. Some of you joined in and just testing things out. As I look so far, I don't want to jinx anything, but things are running very smooth tonight because we want to bring you the highest quality program we can, and we work really hard at it. 
And so, uh, again, thank you for all the information. Cindy's using a lot of it tonight. I've read a lot of the information ahead of time. Some I haven't seen. I'm going to see it for the first time, just like you. But if you do want to get hold of us, you can, you can give us a call and leave us a voice message on our voice line at 701-566-0917. Again, that number is 701-566-0917. If you want to do the old-fashioned email, you can email Cindy at kppfm.com or me, Duke, at kppfm.com. You can uh, tweet us at media underscore ppp, and you can go to Facebook at 88.1 FM Fargo-Moorhead, uh, the People's Press Project, and Mexi-Can. And don't forget to go to kppfm.com. You know, I haven't actually updated our past two shows on there, but I tend to get those done on the weekends, but for some reason I didn't do it this weekend. So we're behind a couple shows. you have to go to Facebook to watch those, but also go to YouTube. Go to Duke1517. All the shows we do, we upload to YouTube, and then we uh, put them on our webpage at kppfm.com. We'll take audio files from the shows, and we'll adapt them to be able to be ready for radio play here in the Fargo-Moorhead community. So there'll be an audio file on that. You can also communicate at the bottom of every one of those pages. You can send us messages through our, through our website. And also, if you'd like to support our work, and, and make a tax-deductible contribution, go to kppfm.com slash donate. And also, if you have a business or something you'd like to have a mention on the air here, we do underwriting where you make a tax-deductible donation to our organization, and we'll put, we'll put an uh, underwriting spot on the radio. Spread the news about whatever your business is. Maybe you'll get some people to support you and at the same time supporting us. So thank you very much, and we hope you're going to have a great show tonight. Yes, we do. And really, lately, there has been a lot of stuff that we have been uncovering with regard to these Antifa-connected people from the Border Support Network, including its founder, Evan K. Duke. Recently on social media, he's been complaining about the fact that a Congress member has introduced a bill that would make Antifa members terrorists, that would label them as what they are. Maybe it is in response to the bombing of the Tacoma, Washington facility uh, that AOC was so reluctant to even condemn or comment on. Their actions have repeatedly put people in danger, in harm's way. In this article I'm going to share with you today from weight.com, it talks about this action that AOC is tweeting about, that she's been messaging about, titled, Neighbors from Form Human Chain, excuse me, to prevent ICE agents from taking man into custody. It says that people in Hermitage formed a human chain to prevent, to prevent immigration and customs enforcement agents from taking a man into custody. It all started around 7 a.m. and it lasted for hours in the area of Valley and Forest Ridge drives. Neighbors told News 2 the man and his 12-year-old son were in a van in their driveway when an ICE vehicle blocked them. The family refused to get out of the van as neighbors stepped in to help, bringing them gas for the van, food and water, They also eventually formed a human chain so the man and his son could get inside their homes. We formed a human chain and they went in the house and they're safe now, said neighbor Felicia Felicia Shada Young. (coughs) We're going to hold it down as long as the police were here. We were going to be out here just as long. I will share uh, the links, as I always do with you, for this article so that you can check it out for yourself in total. But let me get to the heat of the meat here. This is the tweet by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in which she is talking about raising money for Raices, that group I had told you about. And you can see Her other Facebook page, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez Progressives, is sharing AOC's tweet. And could you go back to the one with Raices, please? The first one? That one? It is. No. 
Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, it, it looked like it switched over to the other one. It says, last week we called the concentration camps at the border for what they are. In the weeks since, Acting Director of Customs and Border Patrol resigned. Bank of America announced it will stop financing for-profit immigrant detention and private prisons. Words matter, she says. And it says she's asking for donations from her Facebook page, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez Progressives at the bottom of which you can see that the fundraiser is actually for the group Raices. There it is. She raised at the point at which I took the screen capture anyway, she had raised over $8,800. And from the same AOC Progressives page, AOC uh, posts Steve Hale's tweet about this ice truck being blocked he says from at I am Steve Hale, best I can tell, here's what happened. A man and his son were in his van in their driveway. Ice truck pulls behind them, blocking them in. A standoff for several hours. Neighbors bring the man water and more gas for car. Eventually, they form a chain so man and son can return to the house. <clears throat> so, so far, this is a report of a very uh, tense standoff. It sounds heartwarming, doesn't it, Duke? Right. People from the community, people from the neighborhood got together to help a man and his son, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Talk about it. What are your thoughts initially on this? Oh, well. If, if, you, if you didn't know what I'm about to reveal mm -hmm. about the fact that one of the people doing the videotape and many of the people organizing their work very closely with the smugglers and organized crime, this would all just seem like a very heartwarming tale, right? right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the thing is, is that there's been several stories, you know, and uh, several things that happened that these uh, so-called progressives are highlighting people and they're highlighting the situations and actually, as it gets deeper, the people they're protecting and highlighting are actually criminals. And they, they're, you know, they haven't even hit it well. It's easily found out, and it is being found out, so these things are being exposed, and it's like, but they're milking stories. I mean, like I said, all these fake activists, they need issues. And so they're really grabbing these issues, and they all grab and run with them, and a lot of them are going sour, and it's all catching up to them. Well, um, I feel the need to share this with you because... It seems to me like a lot of the people that helped smuggle folks into the U.S. are now actively working to abolish ICE and help them avoid being uh, uh, detained or deported. That's what it seems like to me. And I'm going to show you my math on this so you can look at it for yourself. Here is a post about the neighbors stopping ICE and how it couldn't have been possible unless Tristan Call and Kat Carrillo had been there. This post, for, post from <clears throat> excuse me, Brenda Ayala reads, This was only possible because of the community organizing building up in Nashville. Immensely proud of my friends Tristan and Call and Kat Carrillo for being there for this family. If you want to help out, Whenever things like this happen, sign up in this Google form below to receive ICE raid alerts. Hmm. And you see there's a link there for people to sign up for this ICE raids. Keep going, please. Thank you. Neighbors stop ICE from arresting a man at his hermitage home <clears throat> from the Nashville scene.com. And they, uh, Tristan also posted about the ICE rapid response in this post, excuse me, Susan McBride, Hudson McBride posted about it, but it's uh, got six others there you can see that are linked in this rapid response. This is people-powered work that helped save this dad and his family. But ICE is regrouping, so there are going to be more alerts in the future and people need to sign up to be on the list. Who is tagged in this? Well, here are the tags for this post, and you can see there is Tristan Call. In addition to that, we have Tristan live streaming 
shows, here's the screen capture <clears throat> that shows that the video that was used that made national headlines was his. ICE officers are now in plain clothes and driving unmarked vehicles to detain people in Nashville. This live stream by Tristan Call shows how these detentions really happen. There's no identification given, thus no way of verifying that the officers are truly law enforcement. ICE seems to be operating totally rogue. What's truly shocking is that the MNPD claims not to be cooperating with ICE and yet doesn't intervene when officers are on the ground like this. The officers in the video even say that this man had no outstanding warrants that would justify this kind of detention or removal. And there is a video uh, from Tristan Call linked in the post. Can you read that one, Duke? It says, second, second update. <clears throat> second update. The organizing today happened largely because of local neighbors who were supported by dedicated people of movements, including X, XDAC-MIX. If anybody wants to donate to help build infrastructure for this kind of work to continue, they can send donations to their Venmo. And <clears throat> I'm going to share the video. Um, you'll see Tristan Call is right uh, in the beginning of the video. He's the guy with the blue T-shirt on and the uh, baseball cap with the glasses. You may recall that I shared a video of him in the past. I'm going to refresh your memory just as soon as we watch a little bit of this so that you can get an idea of what is going on. Uh, for those that ha only have audio, he's going to be narrating what the police are doing and uh, the interactions between some of the neighbors as well as people be prepare to surround this vehicle and get the people out. I'm gonna get a water bottle from Amber and that to try to get to but um just hold that. Just hold that. Just hold that. Okay. Mayor sending someone right now. Hi, this is Tristan um here in Hermitage right now. Um I'm gonna show you what we're what we're doing here right now. Um these are a couple of ICE officers currently in Nashville. They've uh they've identified themselves as immigration customs enforcement, but they, uh, they have not said so far their names or what office they're from. Um, is they're, it possible to say? Already, you can go talk to the attorney or the sure. immigrant rights people. They already know who we are. We're not going to identify ourselves to the public out here. We don't need to identify ourselves, okay? You can go talk I understand. To it, people are wondering, though. You, you came and you're trying to detain people. People are scared and, and trying to understand who you are and why you're here. Okay. Okay. You're, I don't have to answer questions. You're from ICE, though. I already told you that. From You're removal welcome operations. Welcome. You're welcome to come talk to the team. Okay. So as you can see, um, good. These are a couple of neighbors. I'm I'm live streaming right now. Do you wanna? Yeah. They don't bother nobody, and this is illegal. Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this plate here. Um, this is this is the truck that people say has been driving around the neighborhood for like yep. a week or two now, posting up, like hunting people. Yep. Um, as you can see, it's a Tennessee Davidson County plate, unmarked, not as ICE, not as police. Um, sorry, I don't know if y'all could hear me well with the, with the headphones. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take the headphones out. But so this is the truck um, that uh, the ICE officer came in. There's another one over here. Um, we have a uh, friendly city councilman over here that showed up. Thanks for coming. Um, you want to? We have a live stream going. You just want to say hi. Hi, I'm uh, Bob Mendez, and uh, just came to see what's going on out here. No, I appreciate. It. I know you just got here, so but maybe in a few minutes after you see what's going on, we'll ask you what you think. All right. All right. Um, so this is one of the other cars. This is one of the other, I believe. Um, Ah, this is this is not an ice car. Do not, yeah. Okay, that car is totally fine. Do not worry about it. Um, hey, officer, can I say hi again? So, just to be real clear, because I know a lot of people are going to have this question. Are you know y'all are here kind of for what purpose right now? 
if it gets out of hand. Okay. There's too many people that bum rush the car. We're not here to enforce any federal script or whatever they got in their hands. We are just here if, he, if any criminal, anything major. Right. Um, but as, as far as y'all know, like, there's no, like, threat to public safety. There's no, like, the person here, y'all are not looking for them. Nope. Um, there is no, to, to y'all's knowledge, no reason why they would be in trouble with the law here in Nashville for, for any local law enforcement yeah, no reason. On them okay. From All right. And so, and so ICE identified themselves to you and, and called y'all, or how did that work? They said that they tried to stop a vehicle and pulled into their driveway and keep them out and assist, that would be great. Okay. So just like for context for people watching, that happened a couple of years ago. Um, ICE was pulling people over over in South Nashville and the mayor at the time um, put out a pretty public, I think, video and letter saying ICE stop stopping people on our streets. Right now you can't quite see it because it's still a driveway. But, um, but from what we're hearing, you know, they did, they did do a vehicle stop and did like actually try to like, you know, stop people on public streets here in Nashville. Yeah. Are they communicating with y'all about what their intentions are, about what they're trying to do today? Other than taking him into custody, other than that, no. Okay. I don't know what their plan are, don't know how long they're going to wait. We'll be here till the end. Okay. And we have people, so we got through to the mayor, they're sending someone now, um, haven't gotten through to the police chief yet. But as far as you know, in terms of like how far up the line people are aware of what's happening? Okay. So people know. Are, are they saying anything from the top about what they would like for y'all to do? Sure. Appreciate that. Right. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Um, um, got a question to you, if you don't mind turning out just 30 seconds. Um, I, can, I can turn it away. That's fine. Um, if something does happen, if you guys could just stand back, that would be best for everybody, including the people in your car. I understand. We're not going to be dealing with it. That's going to be on them. But if they could just step back. I understand. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be in the car. All right. Do you know the, the, the metro car here with the... Nope. That one? There, was a, there was a metro, like a public works car driving around. But they may have just been with the, the trash truck. The only people that I know are us and them. Okay. All right. I'm a city... Yeah, not sure who this is, but there's a, a a metro official car here. Unclear on who exactly they are. Um, feel free to share. I think it's important that people know that ICE is currently operating here in Nashville, um, in uh, in the Hermitage neighborhood, and they are looks like they're actually going around a little bit door to door um, in some in some. Uh, in the neighborhood, kind of trying to um, trying to calm things down, but there's a uh, there's a guy here in this van with his truck or with, with his uh, with his son, and uh, I think they've been in the car for about four hours, um, you know, waiting, hoping that you know somebody might care enough to show up, and uh, we have you know officer over here in green who has identified himself as ICE, but. Other than that, has uh, refused to identify himself or what office he works for or what sub-agency of ICE. Um, officer over here, the taller guy, also ICE. Neither of them are carrying any identification. Neither have offered any identification as law enforcement. Neither of the cars that they're driving um, have any kind of marking as police. Um, they say that they're ICE officers. We have no way of knowing if that's true or not, but, um, but that's, that's what they say. And... Um, I'll ask again, you know, if, if they're willing to show any kind of official ID so that we know that that's actually true. Yeah, it's the same, bro. Officer, do you, do you have anything? I already showed him. Okay, do you, do you have anything? I already showed the person we're trying to arrest. Okay. Is it possible to show me any kind of, th to, show, to prove that you're police and you're not just trying to kidnap this person? Don't, don't tell the police you're afraid that we're kidnapping somebody. Officer, like, is there any way to actually know that you're really police? 
is that, can you? I mean, you can look that up on Google, honestly. Okay. I'm just trying to <laughs> I know, I understand. But like, is there, is there anything that you have to show us that you're actually legitimately law enforcement and not just trying to kidnap somebody? Okay. Officer, would you, would you be willing to at least show your badge? Uh, who are you vouching for? <laughs> okay, uh, his name or? Okay, I understand. Officer, are you able to identify yourself that you're not just some random person here to kidnap your neighbor? I've been. This goes on and on and on and on. Uh, Tristan keeps asking questions. I mean, it's part of the tactic here to disrupt the action of law enforcement, of ICE in this case. And I don't know what the case of this man or his son or his family is. I don't have details about that. I am here to talk about the activists who put this on and what their connections are, because those things need to be questioned and known. And you saw that he was calling for people to come out. Now, Pippa Holloway posted this, and gives it really gives you an insight into how all of this is done. Want to read that one, Duke? Sure. Pippa Holloway. Here's an update on the ice raid that was, that was foiled this morning in Nashville. People on the block rallied together to protect this family when they were trapped in the car. Neighbors brought water, Gatorade, as well as gasoline so they could keep the engine running in the van. Other neighbors contacted local activist groups who could bring our out lawyers, political leaders, and the press. Mm. Hmm. Finally, they formed a human shield to protect the dad and the son while they ran from the van to the house. See minute 24 of the embedded Nashville Nautica's link. This is how we protect our communities by working together. Thanks to Christian Call, Jack w Wiley, CM Bob Mendez, CM Fabian Bende, Jeannie Alexander, Lindsay Nicole Smith, and other folks who were on the scene helping protect his family, make sure that due process was followed and informed our city about what was going on. There it is. And here's another post from Pippa where she and Tristan are fundraising for oh, one of, of these course. organizations. Because, of course, I told you what the the the, the uh, three step process is, right? Create outrage. Make it viral. Mm -hmm. Fundraise off of it. Yeah. And they've all of these folks, they they follow this this uh, recipe to a T. This is how they do the thing that they are currently doing. And if you don't remember where you've seen this guy before, let me show some of the things from Tristan's page. Here's uh, AJ Plus's video of Cristobal Sanchez and Irineo Mujica, the Pueblos Sin Fronteras gentlemen, well, smugglers, human smugglers, who were arrested in Mexico shortly after President Trump threatened to give uh, sanctions in the form of tariffs to Mexico. You may recall that there was two accused human smugglers, this man on screen now, Cristobal Sanchez, as well as Irineo Mujica. And I shared this AJ Plus Spanish video with you very recently that has been circulated by the De Frontline Defenders Group and by the groups that are organizing these close the camps actions. If you haven't been watching my previous shows on these topics, go to kppfm.com. Nemo will be sharing out the last four or five shows I've done on the comments of this program, won't you, Nemo? And then you can go back and check those out. But just to remind you, Cristobal Sanchez was arrested in Mexico City. This post by Gina Garibo of Pueblos Sin Fronteras shows you that arrest outside of the stadium in Mexico City. Here is that video. One moment, please. You're going backwards. Yeah. Here we go. 
Where's the warrant? Where's the warrant? The women are yelling. We talked about this video in the past and the way in which these activists, I mean, it's astounding how they uh, fight the police, physically fight the police. Here in the United States, it would be a very, very bad idea to do that. If you were to fight the police, fight the arrest, you know, mm -hmm. and then the other activists go and grab on the police trying to prevent the arrest from happening. Mm -hmm. And when uh, he gets loose for a minute, he doesn't run away. He goes and tries to stop the police from arresting some of his uh, cohorts there, as you saw. Well, Irineo and him were both arrested on the same day. Uh, and this is the press conference that they held. In, in, on, and this is available on Pueblos Sin Fronteras Facebook page if you go there. I've shared these uh, video links in the past, but you can go and check out the videos. I'm going to show you a little bit of part two. Check out the guy in the blue shirt and the baseball cap. Same dude that took this ice truck uh, van video in Tennessee. Here he is in Mexico not that long ago when these two... Cristobal Sanchez and Hugo, I mean, Cristobal Sanchez and uh, Irina Mujica were arrested. This is right after they were released. They held a press conference. Here's that video. Chiapas, nos constituimos como colectivo de monitoreo en derechos humanos del sureste desde octubre del año pasado y hemos documentado eh, las violaciones a derechos humanos que se han cometido eh, y todo el contexto generalizado de recorrido de las personas. Eh, y en este caso, pues también nos constituimos para observar el cumplimiento al debido proceso en las audiencias de, eh, de Irineo Mujica y de Cristóbal Sánchez. Eh. So, you recognize that guy, right? Yep. You recognize him? The same dude. Tristan was fundraising for Irineo and Cristóbal, asking that charges be dropped for them. He did a fundraiser on his Facebook page in scene two, it's the third, fourth image here. You can see Tristan fundraising for Irineo and Cristobal on his page. Drop the charges. And it says, help me get my dear friends out of jail. These are his dear friends of Pueblos Sin Fronteras that have been accused of international smuggling of humans. And he also shared that AJ Plus video that I had on my last show. Here is that AJ Plus screen capture on from his Facebook page. You can go ahead and get ahead of me if you want, Duke. Um, there's a lot of these. This prompts me to share this Pueblo Sin Fronteras uh, tweet. Recently, both of uh, Irino and tweet. <clears throat> from Pueblo Sin Fronteras saying that they are very thankful for to the subsecretary of human rights uh, pop, uh, people and migration of the in government institution of Segob. Segob. They're tagged right there. And Mr. A. Encinas for the dialogue that they had on that date. This was very recent. This happened over the weekend. And for their commitment to defending those who are defenders of human rights. Dang. And you can see they say hashtag migrating is not a crime. Hashtag defenders without borders. That's the name of one of my shows I did recently. Hmm. 
where I featured a lot of these people. Here's the second part of that tweet in which you can see all of those present, including Irineo Mujica, Alex Mensing, and Gina Garibo, all the way on the left there. Tristan has been doing this uh, smuggling, I want to call it, because that's what it appears that Pueblo Sin Fronteras has been involving themselves in. Is uh, been going on for a while. Here he is in Guatemala taking a selfie with some folks. And uh, <clears throat> this was from June, July 15. He comes and goes to the U.S., to Central America, and in Mexico. Travels like lightning from one place to another. Here he is with Alex Mensing and Gina Garibo tagged in a uh, convocatoria, which is a gathering, an event, where they will present arguments and critical study of society number 90, titled El Auge de la Migración y los Refugiados en Latinoamérica, the, you know, the, the source of migration and refugees in Latin America. And uh, that is not the only post that Tristan has in common with these po folks. Here he is talking about um, AOC's Green New Deal, and he posts Movimiento Cosecha's post about what their plans are, which include legalizing all undocumented migrants, immediately shutting down all detention centers, putting a moratorium on deportations, and reuniting separated families. Tristan says, only plan that could earn an immigration plan endorsement from me, plus an end to money bail, the new Green Deal, Medicare for All, and an end to military aid to Central America and other dictatorships. Tristan, folks, is also friends with Estefania Rebellon of Yes We Can and the mobile bus outside of the Caritas shelter, where Oscar El Blue Ramirez recently went and filmed and captured a whole bunch of people all at the same place who work together in this vast network of people that are helping to bring folks into our country. He's also friends with Paula Graciela Khan, the woman that works for Jody Evans and Code Pink. Remember the show I showed you all the connections to Co Code Pink? Here's a post from Melanie Gleason. In it, she talks about how they accompanied back in 2017 during the Via Crucis. Remember that I told you Pueblo Sin Fronteras began all of this. All of this caravanning with this religious theme, the stages of the cross, the Via Crucis. This is how uh, religious leaders were brought into the fore on this conversation of the caravans. So going all the way back then, Tristan is tagged in the second part of this post on the Melanie Gleason post two tags, Melanie Gleason post two tags, you have to go to the bottom of scene two, the end almost, of, there it is. You just went right by it. Melanie Gleason tags two. Thank you. And if you scroll to the bottom where they're talking about these folks that they were accompanying, she makes a demand that ICE and CBP release the 78. And look who she tags. Nicole, that's Nicole Ramos, if you were wondering. Jorge, I don't know who that is, not important. But Alex is Alex Mensing of Pueblos Sin Fronteras. Ian is Ian Fillybaum of the, uh, I can't remember, the Innovation Law, Innovation Law Lab, one of the many organizations suing the Trump administration over its immigration policies. And Tristan is Tristan Call. okay? Hmm. So this goes back a while. 
Again, let me show you the Via Crucis tags here. The Via Crucis says right here, they're talking about this group of people that traveled back in 2017, one of the very first uh, caravans that was like the testing grounds for what we're seeing now. And you've got Elena Alderman. I, sh I did a whole show talking about her and her connections working with Pueblos Sin Fronteras, Lucas Lucatero, Alex Mensing, Veronica Gabriela, Irien Irineo Mujica, and Tristan Call. He is important to all of these, but that's not the only people he is very closely tied to that should be disturbing. He also has ties to Minority Humanitarian Foundations, Mark Lane, Nicole Ramos of Al Otro Lado, the Crooked Lawyers from Al Otro Lado, and Pitaya Queen of Diversidad Sin Fronteras, the LGBTQIA uh, trans leader who is responsible for the death of one of the trans women that they put into ICE custody. At least that is what she's been accused of by many of the people that followed the story of, um, of that woman. Here you see in this Mark Lane post where they're talking about her. She was one of the trans women we met in the migrant camp. I hate our Gestapo and their behavior. The time is now time to get the pitchforks out. And he tags among many people Shane Parmalee one of the political actors out in California that helps raise money for many campaigns and is very close friends with Mark Lane and Mohammed El Nakib. We also have uh, Nicole Ramos, Gina Garibo of Pueblos Sin Fronteras, Elena Alderman of Pueblos Sin Fronteras, Alex Mensing of Pueblos Sin Fronteras, and Tristan Call. They're all there. And of course, you know, Diversidad Sin Fronteras is run by Pitaya Queen, who has been uh, accused in Mexico by a number of media outlets of sexually trafficking gay children, children, people for prostitution. Mark Lane, Pitaya, they're close. I told you they worked together along with Nicole Ramos of Al Otro Lado. Here in the comments of that post, you can see the picture of the people that Mark Lane says included the woman who died. Someone says that they don't see her in the picture, but this picture, if you look at it close up, you can see Mark Lane. No, just go to the next picture, honey. It's called close up. And there you have the full picture. Um, Mark Lane believes that the woman that died is the one in the bun with the yellow flowers, but right up in front you see in purple jacket, Pitaya Queen. Pitaya Queen. Remember, I told you that the Teen Vogue article, which featured Mark Lane, Pueblo Sin Fronteras, Gina Garibo, and all of these people that got a letter from Leti Herrera, uh, the manager of the Carita Shelter in Tijuana, run by Mark Lane, and uh, Bertie Gutierrez. It was all a setup, soup to nuts beginning to end, a fantasy for you to believe that these LGBTQIA members were under threat of being murdered by the homophobic and transphobic Mexicans. Here is the video. I found the video that was linked to that Teen Vogue article that is no longer available when you click on that link, but I found it for you, and here it is. I will try to translate. Soy parte de la comunidad LGBT. I'm a este, part of the LGBTQIA community. The shelter we were at yeah, was uh, attacked yesterday, so we don't have a place to be. The shelter was closed down. We we're physically and morally threatened este, with weapons. Nos viven 
They yell at us on the streets. Police move us from wherever we are located. We don't feel safe anywhere in Tijuana or anywhere in Mexico because of the discrimination, because they're closed-minded. We demand the authorities of the United States to listen up to our petition and open the way for us to our next destination, which is the U.S. We simply ask you to give us permission that you open the door for us. This uh, officer uh, discriminated against us. They aggressively removed us and told me that we couldn't be in this area because this is a federal property. We have the rights that are not being respected here in Mexico or in our countries of origin, and we demand that the United States listen to us and open the door for us. We don't know where we're going to sleep tonight. We're probably going to sleep on the streets, standing the cold. They should be more considerate of us and support us and helping us and from the American government to listen to our petitions to give us access to this entry point. We're fleeing Central America because of discrimination and fear, deaths that we've experienced amongst our friends because of the hate against our community. We're indignant because we feel that what we're living is a torture being det detained by the federal police like our friend was. She's been detained for a week now, and we don't know when she'll get out of jail. I don't think it's fair. Please, United States, hear our petitions. We here are not safe in Mexico, and we're not respected because of our gender identity. We just wish to enter the United States and be better and have a better future. A new life because we can't do it in the U and our countries because of so much murder to our LGBTQ community. We're trans girls and we're running from the violence in our countries and we can't have the same thing happen to us in Mexico. So we ask the Americans to be conscious and hear our petitions. So that was the video that was attached to the Teen Vogue article that I shared with you. You remember me talking about that? Oh, yeah, here's, it. here's Gina Garibo, uh, Bertie Gutierrez, and Ari Harnorvar. Let me remove this so we can take a look at this next slide. Uh, this is a post of that vid very video by Gina Garibo that uh, I did a search on to include Tristan Call's connection to these folks. And as you can see, she posted this from Baja California, Tijuana. And a comment there from the writer of the article in Teen Vogue, Ari Harnorvar, the very same woman that was just at the Caritas shelter the other day when Oscar El Blue Ramirez of Border Network News was there to film the Yes We Can bus of Estefania Rebelon and the Caritas Shelter. And what does she say? She says, Ruth Reinhardt, the wonderful Bertie Gutierrez translated this video for the Teen Vogue article. Really? Interesting. Mm -hmm. She translated. So Bertie was involved in, this, in the Teen Vogue article. I didn't even know that part. Thanks, Ari Harnorvar, for telling us how many of you in this network uh, working with organized crime were involved in putting over, putting one over on the American people and committing asylum fraud, asylum fraud by faking a hate crime in Mexico and using your media allies to put this lie out and make it a story. Here's that Teen Vogue article in case you forgot here's a screen capture teen vogue mark lane screenshot where you can see mark lane is quoted can you read that duke i can try mark lane a san diego based legal advocate for lgbtq migrants tells teen vogue in latin america transgender people are not safe it's almost like they've 
they're hunted for pleasure. Look how they sensationalize things. And then, mm -hmm. of course, there's Nicole Ramos echoing the concerns, right? Saying the police, the gangs, the military targeted LGBTQ people in Central America. They use public indecency laws to incarcerate trans women. The one of the caravan members was falsely accused of prostitution. Prostitution is legal in Tijuana. Yeah. What are you talking about, Nicole? When they arrested them, they were forced to perform sexual acts on those who arrested them. I don't know how much of this to believe because so much of what they say is fabricated from whole cloth. But I wanted to remind you, this is the video link. You see it in red there at the bottom. That's the link to the video you just watched that is no longer available if you seek this article. It's still out there. You can go and look at this article and read it for yourselves. This Teen Vogue article written by Ari Harnorbar, the women you just saw commenting about the translation of the video by Gert Bertie Gutierrez. And let me show you, Mark Lane is tagged, Tristan is tagged, excuse me, in Mark Lane's post about how they are getting asylum granted for many of these folks. Can you read that one, Duke? Yes, asylum granted. We met Charlotte's, we met Charlotte several months ago. She's from Cameroon. She would come up the, le uh, up the legal visit area with our clients who spoke French and translate for us. We found out she had been detained for better than a part of a year. Detained, bond, denied bond, no real help or family here. She couldn't afford a lawyer and was trying to navigate the immigration courts herself. She was always positive and upbeat despite what life had done to her. We told her we would take over her case for her pro bono for about four months. Today, Francisco Javier Aldana spent the morning in court fighting for her. So we won. She won. Asylum granted, green card coming, and she'll finally be released from detention. One for the good guys. Congrats, Charlotte. Well, if you think the good guys are the smugglers, then maybe so. But here's the tags, and this is the most important part of this post. Let's scroll down and look at all of the people that are tagged there, including the people that started the Minority Humanitarian Foundation. James Alaya. You've got the uh, political uh, actor there, Shane Parmalee. You've got Nicole Ramos, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these folks I don't know, but I'm going to point out the ones we do. We've got Tristan Call is in there. There's Aramika. Pay attention to Aramika right there in that post because Aramika, Aramika is running for office. And I'm going to show you who is posting about Aramika. I haven't gotten into her yet, but I will at some point. Of course, we've got Gina Garibo, El Elena Alderman, uh, Tristan Call, all of Pueblos Sin Fronteras. And if you recall, Octavio Rael, uh, Rafael Amaral Valencia that works with um, the Carita Shelter Manager um, and many of the people that work with Bertie Gutierrez. And finally, at the very bottom, you have Henry Winkler's daughter, Zoe Winkler. Oh. Remember her? Yeah. Remember? Mm -hmm. Hollywood is up in the house. Keep they got to be. Yeah, Keep because they helped do all this fundraising on Mark Lane's insistence. And here are more, just so you know, and you can go through these quick just so people can see. I didn't even screen capture all of them, but I want you to know because sometimes people say, you you seem to accuse people by association. Yeah. No, it's <clears throat> not one association. They're like this. They're like we say in Spanish, uña y mugre, the dirt and the nail. They're that connected. Mm -hmm. and take a look at how closely these folks work together. They link each other up in social media. Here's post one uh, that links up Alex Mensing, Tristan Call, Mark Lane. These are all, by the way, these are all, if you look at the very, very top of this post, posts that include the very top, Mark Lane in Tristan Calls Stuff, okay? Next one, post number two. He's got more Alex Mensing. Just scroll from the top, top to the bottom on each one of these real quick, like that, so people can take a look. 
They're sharing Pueblo Sin Fronteras posts. Another Mark Lane post here, number three. You've got Gina Garibo, Tristan Call. Tristan Call's post on helping support a GoFundMe. Another one here, number four. Gina Garibo with that video about the LGBTQIA caravan members. Alex Mensing posting about Mexico City when they're leaving with the caravan. Number five, you've got more posts here about their human rights work. Mo more posts of Pueblos Sin Fronteras, number six. We could do this all day. Yeah. <laughs> Again, OJ Pitaya is both in both of these as well. She is one of the people that works very closely with these human traffickers and is also accused of being a human trafficker, uh, including children. Children who members of the uh, Jardín de las Mariposas refuge in Tijuana said they saw had acquired sexually transmitted diseases on their private parts, which the shelter managers had witnessed themselves because of the sexual interactions between the children in this LGBTQIA caravan and the adults in the LGBTQIA caravan. Tristan Call, just in case you are wondering, is connected to Standing Rock. That's why I am friends with him, because he was probably one of the people that got arrested and ended up at my house. Ooh. Here's Standing Rock posts. I didn't screenshot all of them either. I just wanted to give you a little taste of him posting from Indian Country Media Today. Background on the Standing Rock Indian Reservations. There's a post from Carwell Bjork. There's another one here in the post number two. Uh, Tristan posting about the veterans stand for Standing Rock. The Veterans Stand for Standing Rock mm. brought to you by TYT's Michael A. Wood Jr. and Wesley Clark Jr. and post number three. Of course, this Tristan is posting about the intercept there. We saw that Close the Camps, the group, the org, includes uh, Jeremy Scahill of The Intercept. And we've known since Standing Rock that they are media allies of these criminal elements these mercenary activists, as Professor Correa Cabrera calls them, veterans to serve as human shields promoted by him, and one about an action to um, protest the headquarters of the ING Bank. But Tristan is not just close to Mark Lane and to Nicole Ramos. He's also close to Hugo Castro, of the border angels here are some posts from my search into their connections Hugo Castro has shared Tristan calls posts there's one there about pueblos sin fronteras that is one of uh, Trist that quotes Tristan as being an escort of the caravan so he's one of the smugglers and of course, you have one from Martha Balaguera about the Via Crucis. And as I've said, Tristan is friends with Nicole Ramos. You can see there's Tristan. We have two mutual friends. One of them is Tristan. Hmm. She is the lawyer from Al Otro Lado currently suing the Trump administration. Here is her tweet about her newest lawsuit by Garolyn Joseph that thanks our partners, Nora Phillips, Nicole Ramos of Al Otro Lado, Ian Fillybaum of Innovation Law Lab, the folks of at ACLU, Kersen. We stand with you against these atrocities. We know all too well the suffering of asylum seekers. We see them. We hear them. We feel their pain. The fight for justice, human dignity, and love continues. Yes, we can. Si se puede. I don't know if that's Hawaiian, the second <laughs> one there. But Maybe. if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this post, it talks about the civil rights groups filing lawsuit to challenge Trump's new asylum restrictions. Hmm. And Nicole has also denounced the uh, visit from authorities to search shelters, 
in this post in Spanish where she is retweeting Pueblos Sin Fronteras, which uh, originally posted about the unacceptable uh, activity of federal police visiting a shelter. I listened to a press conference from Mexico in on Monday, and this question was brought up, although Marcelo Ebrard said that it is not against the federal authorities' guidelines for them to be able to go and find undocumented people wherever they may be inside of Mexico. Hmm. But he said he would get back to him. And Nicole was furious about this, these allegations yet unfounded in the media thus far, as, as far as I know anyway. And she says, another example of the state doing Trump's dirty work. Migrating is not a crime. Asylum seeking is not a crime. Being Central American is not a crime. Enough with the repression of migrant people. <clears throat> She's also had this post uh, about United Veterans. I told you that there is a group of veterans that have been deported. I don't know for what reasons they were deported. All I can tell you is that there is some kind of solidarity between Al Otro Lado and many of these groups to those veterans. I su suspect that it is because of the um, respect that most people have for veterans, the way that people put them in the forefront of all the issues. And she also has ties to Hugo Castro, Nicole Hugo Castro, Border Angels. Uh, this picture was just posted to her page on July 1st, folks. Wasn't hmm. even that long ago. There's four people tagged in it. In the very back row, wearing what looks like a, almost like a flannel shirt, a short sleeve shirt, his fist going up into the A for anarchist outside on the steps of Enclave Caracol, ah. the hotbed for Antifa and other pseudo-activists, mercenary activists that have been plaguing the city of Tijuana for over six months now. You see there, next to the man with the sunglasses, Hugo Castro, in the picture with Nicole Ramos. You see her just behind the man with the blue baseball cap. Mm -hmm. And in this next post, you see the tags, the four people that were tagged, one of which, of course, is Hugo Castro. Oh. And in this next video, I want to show you what Hugo was up to in years past. This was something that occurred uh, back in April of 2017 when Ugo posted this frantic video begging for help and saying he was about to be kidnapped and possibly killed. I will try and translate for you. I need help. I don't have a lot of money. They're not accepting my dollars. I was ag agitated by a group of criminals. I'm here close to on, on highway to Puebla. These guys could be coming after me. I was threatened. They want to kill me. The people who are close to Puebla exiting Mexico. You know, uh, my guess is the people that were trying to kill him have something to do with the cartel, have something to do with organized crime, because that's who these folks are messing with. And I've told you that. And in this article I'm about to share with you from the Daily Caller, you can read all about how Mr. Castro had this near-death experience at the hands of organized criminals. He himself calls them criminals that want to kill him. 
here is a link to that article. And believe me, he was a scared. He was a scared about this because he is messing. He knows. These folks know exactly who they're messing with. So in this article, in this article, this California immigrant activist, remember, he did a stint in, 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 in prison, in federal prison for drug related charges himself. Hugo Castro of Border Angels did time in federal prison for drug related charges. And after that, became an activist, don't you know? In this article, he is touted as an, a California immigrant activist who was kidnapped after pleading for help on Facebook, claimed that he was being hunted by a gang, and he's been found in Mexico alive. He's a volunteer for Border Angels. I think he does a lot more than volunteer. Yeah. This is his full-time gig, being a spokesperson and co-conspirator of Pueblos Sin Fronteras in this article. You can see that they talk about his uh, being um, in that video you just saw or you heard in which he's, uh, you know, this was shared by a lot of people, um, including uh, Gabba Cortez. You remember that video where Hugo Castro and Gabba Cortez of Border Angels did a video in support of Irineo Mujica and mm -hmm. um, Cristobal Sanchez when they were arrested? Yeah. Well, she was posting about his kidnapping in back in 2017, talking about how her partner, Hugo Castro, would not become a statistic that in a country of people that disappear, she was not going to let that happen. Castro... Um, sparked panic after he posted that video saying he was being hunted during the 20 minute Facebook live clip the father of four said he was stranded on the side of a busy highway on his way to Puebla which is about 80 miles east of south uh, excuse me um, southeast of Mexico City and they put out posters looking for him he was missing for several days this guy was missing for several days and then they found him in this kpbs article boy kpbs sure does uh gene guerrero sure does follow the <coughs> active activity of the people involved in the smuggling operation a lot don't they yeah it just seems like they do here's an excerpt from the article you can see Mr. Uh, Enrique Morones, the founder of Pueblos, I mean, excuse me, Border Angels, visiting Hugo in the hospital after he was recovered. Here is the clip from this KPBS article. Castro is expressing solidarity with migrant workers on Facebook while recovering from his injuries in San Diego. He says he doesn't remember much about what happened while he was missing in Mexico, except being beaten up twice after pleading for help on Facebook Live. Me sentía muy, muy como una realidad muy alterna, así muy. I felt so like a very alternate reality. I, at least, would not let anyone do this to someone else. Castro suffered multiple head wounds, bruising all over his body, and a foot injury. Mexico's attorney general, the U.S. embassy, and doctors have declined to comment on Castro's case without his family's permission. Meanwhile, the family has also declined to release details beyond Castro's own account. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News. So he was famous long before the, you know, 2018 October caravan came in began this non-stop mass migration over our southern border by these criminally connected cartel connected organizations calling themselves human rights defenders let me share with you a story about a cartel wedding that was attended by border patrol agents much to their dismay organized 
by that man you just saw, the founder of uh, Border Angels, Enrique Morones. But this was a huge uh, knife in the back to the Border Patrol agents because in goodwill, out of good faith, at a time where relationships were strained over immigration policy. They allowed the border angels to trick them into helping arrange a a wedding across the border for a man who turned out to be a cartel-connected narco convicted of bringing over 100 pounds of very strong narcotics drugs into our country. Take a listen to this report about the cartel wedding. Real eye opener tonight after the truth comes out about a cross border wedding. The ceremony happened about a month ago and the Border Patrol feels betrayed. The wedding involved an American man and a Mexican woman. It was approved after an agreement between the Border Patrol and a group called Border Angels. Dan Plant is here now with the real story. Yeah, boy, that real story, as you said, is an eye-opener. Uh, the Border Patrol feels like they have been seriously betrayed. They thought that this would be, you know, one of those feel-good stories, an effort to sort of mend fences with some of the immigration groups. That was until the truth came out. It turns out the groom in this wedding that was supposed to be so nice is a convicted drug smuggler. It was designed as a show of unity at a time when unity on the border is at an all-time low. For the first time in history, the so-called Door of Hope was opened for a cross-border wedding. As it turns out, this romantic scene has a very dark backstory. And I would suggest that that group now has, has burned bridges with this agency and certainly, you know, with, with the agents, they felt sucker punched. That the basically, if you see the pictures, they were aghast that they were basically being armed security at a cartel wedding. One month after cameras captured this historic wedding, it turns out the groom is not what he appeared to be. Little known to the Border Patrol, he is a convicted drug smuggler on bail waiting to be sentenced. It was a mixed load of over 40 pounds of heroin, 40 pounds of cocaine, 40 pounds of meth coming into our communities, and yet we've got them here celebrating a wedding put on by the Border Angels. <laughs> the Border Angels are led by the man you see here in the purple shirt. His name is Enrique Morones, and he arranged this wedding. He claims he had no idea that Brian Houston was a convicted drug smuggler. But he says, he's quoted as saying, that he knew that that individual had legal problems. Legal problems indeed, 120 pounds of hard drugs smuggled across the border. Morona says they, meaning the Border Patrol, should have done a better job doing a background check. So here you have a cartel guy, nobody brings that amount over unless they're cartel, doing a wedding here with us as backdrop and is basically almost like it looks like we're his men of honor providing security. When the Border Patrol agreed to have this wedding, this cross-border wedding here on the border, they did so as a gesture of good faith toward the Border Angels, a group that they've been working with for a lot of years. Well, as a result of what happened, that good faith, as you might imagine, has been broken. Keep in mind, this is a story that got international attention from major media outlets all over the world. At the time, it was a feel-good story about cross-border cooperation. Not anymore. There are large mainstream um, media that ran with that story gleefully. You know, love transcends boundaries and borders and all that. I don't think they're going to follow up with this story that that man was a cartel narcotic smuggler. No, not yet. In fact, I think we're the first television station to do this. I reached out to the Border Angels earlier today and checking my phone so far, no response. But this does come as a real punch in the gut for the Border Patrol, as he said. Recently, they have added sewage police to their duties, and now they have been tricked into this wedding ceremony. As for the groom, Brian Houston, well, he's going to be sentenced for drug smuggling. That's going to happen next month here in San Diego in January, 100 20 pounds of hard drugs coming across the border and this guy is escorted up to this wedding like he's some kind of prince unbelievable unbelievable it'll be a short yeah. honeymoon yeah, it is sure. a short honeymoon you're exactly right, <laughs> right. honeymoon yeah. over all right Thank thanks you, dan, dan. You got yeah. it.
our thinking caps, shall we? Yeah. What do you think? You think that Hugo Castro got kidnapped by some rando criminals, had nothing to do with the cartels, perhaps, and disappeared and was beaten. And for those of you who don't have the ability to watch this uh, pre-recorded live stream and are listening to it over the airwaves, Mm -hmm. he looked banged up pretty bad. He had a broken leg or two. He had broken bones. He did not remember, according to the article which I shared with you from the Daily Mail, Nemo can put that in the comments of the show for all of my listeners and viewers, it says that his family would not comment further than what he made as a public statement and that he would not release any of the information about his injuries and that the hospital would not release any information about the nature of his injuries. Hmm. So all of this happened under a shadow of secrecy. Oh, by the way, the founder of the organization that he works with, Border Angels, Enrique Morones, arranged a cartel wedding at oh. the border. You think that was all a <laughs> coinkadink? <laughs> so, huh? so what really happened? Hmm? What's the What do you story? think happened? I don't know. I can't make stuff up. I think that when you're messing with the cartel, things are bound to go wrong. Yeah. That's, that's for what sure. I think. That's for sure. I think that when you are messing with the cartel and also their money, things are bound to go wrong. There's hmm. bound to be some, you know, disagreements yep and let me share with you this is a fun fact duke oh yeah yeah enrique morones his great grandpappy was a well-known union leader during the time of the mexican revolution his name was luis napoleon morones like napoleon bonaparte Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and he's best known luis his grandpappy was best known for his arrest by the Mexican government for trying to dynamite a train full of politicians oh boy. he opposed. Oh, <laughs> great. Maybe the apple doesn't mm-hmm. fall far from the tree. Yep. I don't know. Huh. I have a lot of questions about Mr. Morones and Hugo Castro and their involvement. Their involvement. I will tell you this. Enrique Morones had a lot of posts that involve Ugo. Here are some of them. Let's go through them. Number two. Number three. Number four. Look at all of these posts between these people. And there's Gabba Cortez. You see her number five. Number six. Number five. Number seven. <laughs> We'll just jump around. It don't matter. I just want you to see there's a lot of them. Here's a picture of Gabba, Ugo, and Enrique at a very fancy hotel. Ah. Look at them. It says, Border Angels team, work in progress. Looks like they're having drinks and eating a fancy, fancy dinner is what it looks like to me. And if you go to the hotel, too, you'll see all three of them in that picture there. Ah, Okay. That's the lady that was in the video with Ugo pleading for the charges to be dropped for okay. Irineo yeah. and Cristobal. And here they are, Team Tijuana, at uh, the playas with uh, the director of the shelter there. There's all three of them. Here they are having mariscos. That's the Spanish word for seafood. Okay. At Mariscos Los Arcos restaurant in Playas de Tijuana. Mm. A lot of these uh, quote unquote jobs look like eating and drinking high on the hog. Exactly. And Hugo's, uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, Enrique Morones had his, what looks like his grandbaby or his, uh, a baby in his family. Uh, baptized by Father Solalinde. Oh. And there are several things that share him with Father Solalinde. I don't know. 
uh, how close their relationships are. But here's another post from Ugo, Ugo's page uh, for anarchists. This is his cover photo. You can see the A for anarchist there and abolish ICE. And that's his Facebook page. Uh, here is the post from his page about Aramika. Remember I told you I'd come back to that? Mm -hmm. Here's Aramika. And this is a post from The Young Turks, where oh. Mark Lane is a producer. The people that brought us all the nonsense from Standing Rock, including Jordan Cheridan, the guy that raped one of his uh, co-workers, af uh, shortly after which... Uh, Truth Against the Machine, his newly formed media platform, disappeared. Mm -hmm. And Aramika in this post by Al, Al Beto, Berto, um, reposting the TYT video there, says, Indeed, at Republican Juan Vargas, not lifting a finger against mass incarceration. They're talking about discrimination, defending. But I wanted you to see the tags because there's Marco Octavio Rafael Amaral Valencia, the guy working with Mark Lane and Bertie Gutierrez and the Leti Herrera, all the people that run the Carita Shelter. Then in the same list, there's Hugo Castro mm -hmm. and Jimmy Dore. Oh, Jimmy Dore's in there. Jimmy Dore of TYT, who has his own show that I have shown you, has featured Jay Ponte, Desiree Kane, etc. Ed Higgins, all of those, all of them. So there's Jimmy Dore. And look, who else is in there? Brooke Binkowski. Okay. Who we reached, recently featured on a Nicole Ramos tweet. Mm -hmm. They all work together. They all stick together, Duke. Mm -hmm. They do. And I wanted to show you the, the, the post where Solalinde appears. Another post. This is a different post, not the baptism one. But this is from Hugo Castro's page. And it includes two important figures. Sergio Tamay. And Father Solalinde, if you scroll down to the bottom there, you'll see Sergio Tamay right there in the middle at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember, but when recently Solalinde and Tamay were both in Tijuana when President AMLO had his uh, solidarity uh, event, Oscar El Blue Ramirez interviewed Sergio Tamay who is also, I believe, with Border Angels. Hmm. Um, and finally, I saw this on Ugo's page today, which threw me for a loop. This is very recent from yesterday, folks. He went to take a load of uh, donations, a big load of donations to none other than Alberto, Father Albert, Rivera from the Agape Shelter in Tijuana. Isn't that interesting, Duke? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really interesting. Anyway, that's all I have for you folks. It's best to know where your information came from, and it's also best to know where are your activists now and where have they been in the past? Where did you get them? Where did we get these activists? What are they promoting? And more importantly, who are they working with? Because mm -hmm. if the very same people calling for the abolishment of ICE and open borders are working with organized crime, including cartels, I don't know if those are the best people to put our most vulnerable populations in their hands. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being here on A Mexican Crossing Lines with your hosts, Cindy Gomez-Shemp. And Duke Gomez-Shemp. You've been listening to 88.1 FM, KPPPLP, Fargo-Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Thank you, and good night.